Wasatch Mountain, Shenandoah River. Life is all there, older than the trees, younger than the mountains, blowing like the breeze. Country roads, take me. When the fighting is stopped and the fallout is settled, you must rebuild. I belong, West Virginia. Seventy-six. Our future begins. Hi guys, welcome back. It's your host Craig, and today we're taking a look at Fallout 76. That's right, Fallout 76 was finally teased today. There was a teaser trailer put up after two days of waiting. Two whole days of waiting for the stream to finally end, and it's been announced now. It looks like it's a new upcoming title, or the possibility of maybe a DLC or whatnot for Fallout 4. Who knows, really, at this point, until June 10th, 2018, when we actually finally get to see more about this game in the making. So, folks, I'm mainly going to be going into speculation, some of my own two cents, what's been rumored on the internet, and also little details in the trailer that you may have missed. So that's pretty much it, folks, and I hope you enjoyed this video as well, and, well, let's jump right into it, shall we? In Vault 76, our future begins. Okay, guys, we're going to look at the most important picture here right now, which is the Pip-Boy. It looks like an older model as well. It has the classic stat item and data. It has the Geiger counter. It has your radio with FM and AM. And also, you know, the knob to change the, <laughs> change the radio stations as well. We also have the time and date readout. My Hence why I'm calling this an older model is because the fact that usually most newer models that Fallout 3 and New Vegas and Fallout 4 have the internal date and time, not on the outside of the casing. So looking at this here, we have 27th of October 2102. And if we remember the date of the Great War, which was October 23rd, 2077, 25 years have passed since then. I'm thinking it's 25 years past since then. Apologies if my maths is wrong, but that's what I got when I did it out in my head. And um, so five years, extra five years has been added on Vault 76 as an initial run time, which is very, very interesting indeed. I'm kind of looking forward to see how this goes now. There's been an extra five years there. So these people have been trapped in this conce concealed vault for 25 years. It's one of the control vaults it didn't experiment it on. It was just a control setting experiment to see how the people would live underground for an extended period of time. So guys, let's move on to the next image here now in a moment. I'm just going to point this out before I talk about what's in this room. We do have a red party cup, a grognak the Barbarian, and a pair of glasses next to the Pip-Boy as well. So if you didn't notice that as well, guys. But now we're going to really focus on this wide angle shot of the bedroom. We do have a standard vault tech bed. It looks like to be a double bed because there's two pillows on the bed and it seems wide enough to fit a couple on. Anyway, looking at this right now, we do have a vault tech truck. We have a vault tech, uh, no, sorry, apologies about that. We have a blue vault tech truck underneath it. We also have a red toolbox, baseball, uh, baseball, and a baseball glove. A red, another red party cup as well. We have a pre war cap, uh, jangles the moon monkeys on the bed as well. Also a hint towards, you know, more of a survival aspect of it when they're leaving as well because this vault was made to open up and evict its uh, tenants after 20 years. But they've been there an extra 25, so we're going to see what happens there. Looking at there, we do have a blue rucksack as well. To the left-hand side of the room as well, on the chest of drawers, we do have a lamp and some towels. We also have a hint towards some golf clubs, meaning that maybe golf clubs are making a return as a melee weapon once again. So that's going to be interesting as well. It's a very interesting looking room. It's more kind of a home feel than the vaults we're used to seeing because like vault 101 and every other vault well mainly the ones that weren't kept closed off that's a control more of the experimental ones had more of a science feel to it and you know kind of made it interesting as well so this is the wide angle shot that we have here we're going to move on to the next image now okay guys now we're looking at the next little image here little video here and image we're going to talk about this real quickly 
So right now on the desk, right in front of us, we have a unstoppable, unstoppable. There we go. Board game and also a damn hot beer. It's maybe a new kind of beer type, and it also might be a region only beer. So I didn't really see these in Fallout Three, but we might see them in you know somewhere. Else. I'm going to talk about the location later. Let's we'll just talk about what's in the room right now. And also, there's been a lot of suggestions that this game may be going multiplayer. So on the behind us right now, we have the guitar and the two chairs and the harmonica. Which is very interesting. We have an assortment of books and also we have one of the original toy cars that we'd use for the slingshot as a silent weapon as well. There's been, you know, as I said, rumors about this game going online and possible multiplayer as well. I don't know if it's going to be the MMO version that we all expected a while back or, you know, it could be a cooperative version of this. We're not too sure. I do have some thoughts and feelings about that because usually I enjoy playing Fallout by myself being the lone survivor or, you know, the Wanderer, or so on and so forth. So that's pretty much it there. This is what we get for so far from the image grab, and now we're going to move on to the next image real quickly. Okay, uh, now looking at this image, we don't have a lot in this, but we have a few bits and pieces that I've never seen before, like the Rad Saver game, board game on the top. There's two other assortments of board games as well. We actually, we actually have a little toy or model of one of the cars as well, and we also have a miniature nuclear bomb it's not like one of the mini nukes or anything like that possibly is or not but it kind of more reminds me of the ones they would drop out of aircraft we also have a jack-o-lantern and assortment of books so this is very interesting as well and the most important one around here is the vault poster 1776 to 2076 which in america that is when you celebrate the 4th of july so it's a tensinial uh event it's been about 300 years since the united states became its own nation the 13 colonies are now calling itself the united states of america so there's a little history there as well, giving it the feeling that it may be in a familiar place. I wouldn't say Boston or Massachusetts. I'm more thinking maybe Washington or, you know, the District of Columbia or outside of that, given the location. Well, that's pretty much it. That's more That's more about my uh, hints about that. And this is pretty much the end of this scene. And we're going to move on to the next one in one moment. Really liking that poster. Can't wait to see what we have next. Okay guys, now we're taking a look at this little image clip here and also taking a look at some of the items on this little desk, including the television as well. So let's talk about the TV right now. It's not our usual radio radioactive king television. It's quite more it's more smaller and the most noticeable thing is that the TV is actually in color. So that's a very interesting thing to happen there and it seems a bit out of place because I only remember televisions being in black and white and fallout. So now taking a look at the TV out of the way, it actually has kind of a weird kind of extending antenna on top of it. So it must be picking up a signal from after the war still that's still floating around in the air, you know, still floating around via signals. And now looking on the right hand side, we have something very interesting. The small little truck or the car is actually a Willys Jeep that which was a US military vehicle during the Second World War and during the 50s and so on and so forth. It's kind of interesting to see that that actually is there. And, you know, maybe it's pointing to the possibility that vehicles may be more common than we think and we can get our hands on a, on a Willys Jeep. Also next to the Willys Jeep, we do have a small motorcycle and a soldier as well. So maybe that's reflecting back on Fallout 4 and, you know, generally what we can hope in the future anyway, if there are vehicles going to be built into this version of Fallout or so on and so forth. On the left hand side of the television, we do have some classic mascots from Nuka World. We have the uh, bottle, uh, the bottle and bottle cap from Nuka World. Apologies, I don't remember their names. And also, we have the Nuka Cola rocket as well. So, it might be also another item for Nuka World, or it could be a take on Fallout New Vegas Repcon rockets. So, it'd be kind of interesting to see what goes there. Or Repcon rockets or the Nuka Cola rockets. I can't remember right off the bat if they were Nuka Cola or Repcon version rockets, but you know, let's move on. Oh, right, right there. Let's see. Um, right down to the bottom left, we do have a small Vault Boy bobblehead and also a Mr. Handy model next to him as well. On the top shelf below the television, we do have a small miniature model of a UFO and two comics as well. Down below that, we do have a checkerboard and a box of cigars by the looks of it. And we do include a kind of skills magazine, which we mainly saw during um, New Vegas and whatnot. So maybe they're making a big return. We did get a few of them in Fallout 4, I believe, as well. And looking here now on the right hand side, we two more pre-war books, a iBot model and a small box of bobby pins. So maybe lock picking is back and we're going the more classic way we did in Fallout 3 in New Vegas and of course Fallout 4. So yeah guys, this is pretty much it for here. Main point out right now is the colored TV. I wasn't expecting that when I was watching the trailer and it was a very noticeable thing. So let me know down in the comment section what you think of the, the fact that maybe what kind of era this is taking in. 
so on and so forth. So let's move on to the next image, shall we? Okay, guys, now looking at this one, it's not, you know, I don't think it's too important, but it kind of gives me an idea about it. This is kind of like a trophy case right now. You even have a trophy for cleaning toilets by the looks of it. Uh, but anyway, looking at it right now, it may have to do with the level up system once again. Maybe it's kind of like Fallout Tree or the GOAT once again from Fallout Tree, which you kind of have to choose. Like, let's say the sports trophies there, you have first place on top and so on and so forth. It's like, oh, you like playing baseball, you like being the pitcher, the catcher, or you just like playing soccer, which I'll bring up my point now in a moment. It's kind of interesting to see what kind of a uh, way of leveling up might happen in this game. Maybe it'll be going back to a classic route or maybe a different route altogether. So let's see what happens in the meantime, folks. And yeah, let's move on to the next image. Okay, now taking a look at this photo in general, we have the terminal where it says you are invited. So that's kind of, I think it's more of a hint towards you're invited to the E3, uh, Bethesda E3 conference on June 10th, which is going to be awesome to watch. Can't wait for the watching that. I'm probably going to be work watching that. So I can't wait to see that. But I will look at some of the items once again. We do have one of the, you know, classic fans, pre-war books, some computer parts. Also some more pre-war books, lamp, a coffee, uh, a coffee can by the looks of it, and a weird little owl kind of doll in the background. But on top we have more books and new Coca-Cola. So maybe it's an idea, once again, well, I'm just going to throw it out there with the idea of leveling up and whatnot. Maybe you have like a certain style of character that you like, you know, the level up system, the goat system. Are you a nerdy kind of person, a sports kind of person, on so on and so forth which helps with your overall stats and design as well. So yeah, I'm hoping that at least uh, the characters are fully customizable like all previous fallouts, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Can't wait to check out the next image now in one moment. So guys, let's move on, shall we? Okay guys, now we're looking at this scene right here, which is the living quarters once again. Now we're gonna be exiting the living quarters very soon and checking out the outside. As you can tell from the outside window, there's a lot of festivities going on with Reclamation Day. And yeah, that's going to be very interesting as well. I'm going to talk about that as well near the end. My idea what the team of the game is going to be built around this time. So let's have a look here. So we have the basic setup for a living quarters, um, a neatly, almost neatly decorated kitchen table, some kitchen utensils around, a coffee tin, some super glue, a plant. But also noticeably on the right hand side, there is a dog bowl. So that may be hinting towards another dog companion. There's always usually a dog companion in each Fallout game which is awesome. We had dog meat from Fallout 3 and 4. We also ordered just dog. And uh, we also had Rex from New Vegas. And of course, we had um, the other dogs as well from the last previous two games as well. So this is going to be very interesting as well. And the idea of this vault feels very lived in. Once again, bringing up the idea that this is not a vault to be experimented on. This is a controlled test to see how people would live underground. And once again, vault Tech never expected the World War Tree to happen. So... Once again, this is very interesting well and kind of points towards a possible uh, chance of multiplayer. So let's move on to the next image and have a look at the grand atrium outside, shall we? Okay, guys, now we're taking a look at this part here, which is the grand atrium of the vault, which you can see Reclamation Day is in full swing. The festivities are going on, but there's something missing from this scene. Where are all the people? Where are all the other vault dwellers, the staff, the security guards? They're not there anymore. By looks of it, you're the only one inside of this vault once again. And given the idea is the fact that you might have been left behind when the vault originally opened up at the 20 year mark, and you spent an extra five years inside the vault by yourself trying to get out, or someone let you out. That's my theory on that moment there. Looking around, the festivities were in full swing. It probably hasn't been cleaned up in five years. You know, the only really living area that looks like it was lived in is the one we've seen in the trailer so far. And taking this on to, you know, taking this on anyway, we're going to try to identify some of the rooms and whatnot and notice out the big things, the big changes in this vault, which we have down below, which is the bottom left underneath the stairway. It looks like a small utility room or even a clinic, possibly. Above that is the small mess hall or canteen. Behind the reclamation day or below it is like two windows and a doorway there, which are separated by a divider and a cutout of vault boy pointing the other direction, telling them to go past this point. This is possibly the overseer's office or even the security checkpoint before you go up to the overseer's office. The right hand side of the vault boy, you can actually see a welcome mat with vault tech on it possibly and it's probably leading into the living quarters of where you've lived for the last five years. So my overall theory about this is that you've been left behind and left inside of the vault for quite a while. So with that in mind, I'm going to talk about locations. That's right. Important things right now is locations. 
Overall, I believe that this game is actually going to be based on the Capital Wasteland due to, you know, evidence from Fallout 3 with the Citadel computers with listed local vaults in Washington DC and Vault 76 was upon them. And I also listed the kind of experiments they did since this vault was also once again a controlled vault. And also in Mothership Zeta, the DLC, you actually heard the voice of a vault -Tec employee who started to state that he was checking the site and the building site for the Vault 76 and that was around 2069 as well. Right now I'm going to let you cut into an audio file right now of the guy talking about it and I'll see what you have your take on it. Hey now, no reason to get yourselves worked up. Whatever you need, I'm going to tell it to you. My aunt, I am. Well, I'm pretty sure you want me to talk into this thing, so here goes. My name is Giles Walstoncroft. I'm the current Assistant Chief Executive Officer of the Vault Tech Corporation. I was inspecting the construction site of Vault 76 when I was captured what I can only assume are alien beings from another world. With the last testimony of the Vault Tech Assistant, well, the Assistant CEO, that around the time he was abducted around 2069, just before the vault was finished. Also, to add in just an ending note regarding the song country roads take me home so on and so forth it's kind of more not pointing towards virginia in my opinion in my personal opinion and speculation you're more than welcome to t t ask me questions or you know give me a rebuttal down in the comment section it's more of a coming home kind of a uh, song you know going back to your roots kind of song so that's overall what my video is uh, right about now. We did a deep analysis of all the stuff that was shown in the trailer and we talked about certain things as well near the end. If you watched this far, I want to thank you very much for watching. And yeah, I'll see you next time on RTC. See you guys. Have a good one.